And hello and welcome everyone to Capes and Quests Wrap-Up Edition, the post-game show, if you will. I am Cape Joel, otherwise known as DM Joel, as we stand right here. And joining me is the party, the Crackfighter Squad. How are you doing, everybody? Oh, I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. We, are, we are going to the Crackfighter Squad, aren't we? They're our crack fantastic. team. They are a crack team because we fight the crack uh, <laughs> epidemic okay. in our world. <laughs> You surely, surely do. So, for those who didn't know, I may have mentioned it once or twice before, but this was my first time ever DMing a game, and for Aaron and for Josh, this was their first time playing, and I, not to pat ourselves on the back too hard, but I think we did all right. I think we found a voice. I think we did. I mean, unexpectedly, and I can't wait to get to the point where we talk about that. <laughs> yes, yes. So, 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 who wants to start? We'll, we'll open up the floor like AA. Who wants to go first here with thoughts, feelings, and emotions? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll kick it. I loved it. Uh, I've always been kind of intimidated by the game because mm. it seemed like one of those things, like, if you didn't jump on it when you were younger, you yeah. were going to have, like, mm. no idea uh, yeah. how to handle it, especially with as many numbers as there are. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm not, like, a huge number guy, so that's always a Likewise. bit intimidating for me. But uh, after you get... After you, I got the hang of it or whatever, uh, it was a little bit easier. The character sheet is still a lot to search through. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, but <laughs> I, I, I had an app for that I tried to get you all to download. It's, uh, it's like, free uh, for, like, Android and shit if you wanted to try that. <laughs> ah, damn. I should I should have done that. I mean, I'm glad I learned this way. Uh, I'm going to go pick up my own die because I feel like the computer generator probably worked in my favor <laughs> a little bit. As like I felt like you guys had more randomness in your roles because you were actually rolling, <laughs> mm. and I just don't trust computers. Well, it's just know, I, it's just who Antoine is. I, I had the exact <laughs> opposite on that. I was using a computer, and all my bosses just shut the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so it can really go either way, or well, maybe yeah, just that good. Over, overall, this was like a dope experience, and yeah, I'm, I'm, glad I'm glad I was glad. got to be part of it. The, the cool part is watching, especially I mean Josh and and uh Aaron like playing for the first time where it was like uh there was like some like uh, they weren't immediately ready to jump into it mm. until like suddenly they realized like oh no I've got permission to do anything yep and uh, it was <laughs> yeah. and I liked how like each character kind of like tested the waters like I don't know I'm just going to throw this rock <laughs> <laughs> and just that was how they decided to test the waters with like what can I do in this game yeah it was just so that was kind of fun for me. Yeah, at first, I honestly was looking at this going, oh, this is a lot more restrained than I always thought D&D &D was, because I got to do this thing, and then I have to do this thing, and then that, and these are my options, and then eventually I was just like, hey, you know what, just see what I can actually do. Just just go and see what my options actually are. And, 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 <laughs> and they'll test the limits. And I'll admit, too, that's like probably some of my weakness, too, as a DM, trying to teach the game to people for the first time, because like in that early town section... I wanted to have, like, five or six different ways that you could solve the camel problem, and I wanted to let you know about it. But I feel, as players, when you mention a thing, it's very easy for us to want to jump on that first <laughs> thing that you hear. Right. Because, oh, yeah, I had, like, several ways you could have solved that puzzle. You could have done the bounty hunter thing. You could have gambled with him. You could have stolen off the table and distracted him. You could have drank him under the table, which Thorgy did, which I was very, very happy about that. Nice. Uh, also, too, the, uh, the, the, the mystery uh, elf with the line of fantasy drugs. That was another way you could have done that. He could have enticed you and been like, hey, you know, I have, uh, I have uh, some credit over at Starkey Stable there. You do this line of mystery drugs, I'll let you use it. That could have been a way to do it. Or you could have hitched oh, a ride man, with a bunch of caravans. Drugs. Yeah, you just yeah. did it for free. You did it for funsies. <laughs> and it became your defining character trait, and I like that. Yeah, you <laughs> ran with that, dude. Um, yes, I think yes, that also I really... I also think, think that with two new players being introduced to the game, you as a DM, I thought did a great job because it kept you on your toes. Oh, yeah. Your first time around basically like just anarchy coming from these two people <laughs> i could tell we were surprising you a couple times in there. Yeah, i'm like I, I didn't see that like your whole thing where it's like hey uh we're, we're gonna keep the goblins on the slide and i'm gonna throw shit at them like oh i didn't see this happen when i put this trap together <laughs> when you ripped that pendulum off i was just like that he had no way of knowing that you were gonna take the pendulum as a weapon it was, but oh I he didn't even it. know what that weapon would be <laughs> yeah, but i absolutely but was... loved it but that also speaks to, like, I mean, that's why I love D&D. It's like, you did what? You had to fuck it and give me a second. But, like, there's yeah. enough tools in Figure the game that. to go, like, no, no, no. We can work this situation out. You now have a new weapon. Mm -hmm. Like, 
that's what I love about it. And being a DM too, right there, because you guys don't see my roles, I'm free to just be like, yeah, that's right. Yep, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> you want to fight me on it and say it doesn't happen? We're having fun here, guys. I, I uh, love that. I, I love that uh, Kurt was our moral center, even though he originally decided that he was going to be like the chaotic neutral, like a rogue. rogue. Oh yeah, <laughs> my, my rogue is totally insane. But like when you were starting to get into the game, it was like, oh my god, this is I I. It, this natural thing happened where, like, I became the straight man. Yep. And it was probably because I, I've i played D&D for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. just, right. Like, just RPGs in general. But at some point, like, I just had to roll with it. I mean, no pun intended. But, like, no. to watch what you guys were doing, what the game started to turn into. It's like, God, I haven't actually cut loose and just had stupid fun like this uh, in a really long time. <laughs> and, and that's what I wanted, because I feel the downfall yeah. of many D&D &D shows, and I've listened to quite a few, is that some really do take it too seriously, and they do want it to be like the next critical role, or they want it to be like the next Lord of the Rings thing. And you, you no, this was a... This was a fucking relief for me. Yeah, I, I wanted the was. Animal House version. I wanted yeah, the this is New Jack City. Yeah. I love yeah. it. <laughs> it certainly is. And I'm glad, too, that we very organically all decided, like, yes, we're going to have a chaotic campaign with chaotic <laughs> characters. Because sometimes that's hard to, like, spring on players because they're like, no, I want to be a good hero. Like, everyone I play with is, like, super straight-laced. And like, no, I want to be the heroic guy. And me, I'm always throwing the spanner into it because I'm like, no, let's, let's steal and set fire to things. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just want to be evil. I'm good in my day-to-day -day life. Can I not be evil in this game? As soon as Corbin threw that first rock, I was like, okay, all right, we're wilding out. <laughs> dope. Dope, so, dope, dope. Social <laughs> love contract that. is broken down. <laughs> like, he yeah, was I, without Sam cast the first stone, and Corbin did that. <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea really, like, how any of this works, but I heard someone on a podcast one day, uh, he got asked about, well, I'm going to be doing my first D&D &D campaign. Do you have any advice? And he said, uh, just play a really stupid character who resorts to, vi resorts to violence, <laughs> because then no matter how badly you fuck it up, yeah. you're in character. Yeah. So I went, yeah, <laughs> all right. It's well said. I'm going to do that. Well is uh, is but, there uh, anything you would have wanted to have done different with the benefit of hindsight or something where you wondered uh, oh if i zigged instead of zagged what would have happened uh i wish i had tried to take down the platform like immediately yes. uh i because I, I, I wanted to do that but i was like all right we gotta deal with this bear thing first i'll try i'll do that and now i'm tied up by roses like ah, fuck, sure fucking gone for the platform first thing if if uh, that would have happened, I think how I would have played it is, oh, yeah, they fell and took some damage, and oh, yeah, the hobgoblin lit the barrel mm -hmm. on fire. Now you have to choose, do you end the fight or stop the barrel from blowing up? I think that's how I would have tried to play mm -hmm. it. To add an extra yep. spanner and to be like, right. oh, now, now there's a ticking clock element to this, guys. What are you going to do? Oh, man. I'm glad I'm glad that did not happen. Yes. <laughs> to, uh, to, to telltale it further and to also show that, you know, there's that you were always puppets on strings and that it was always going to end a certain way. General Dijak was always going to be the final boss. Regardless, the thing is that he always would have come early. He always would have done that, even if you had made it on time or if you haven't. So there's there's my little telltale behind the scenes moment. What? Oh, I was going to say, like, for you as a DM this first time around, did you kind of consciously have, like, little, like, check marks or, like, little yes. uh, checkpoints in your head? Like, once we get to here, then I can bring this into play, and that'll be, like, the next part to get through uh, to advance the story. Meticulously, but also I wrote it a little differently, is that I'm like, okay, let me write five fallout random events that they can run into in the desert, that if I've written it well, we'll all be able to kind of circle back to it. Like, had uh, you hidden somewhere during the sandstorm, you would have found the Dudley gang hanging out in the cave, and that would have led to a bit of a standoff, where it's like, ooh, do you walk away? Do you fight? Do you maybe make friends with them, which you might have? Right. Hey, friends with Spike Dudley? He was always my favorite. Absolutely. He's, yeah. a, he's a teacher now. <laughs> oh, oh he didn't get really? the reward on them because the city burned. I mean, they're wanted elsewhere in the Empire. But uh, then again, Bob, uh, if you're jumping you know. the border, though, they're not wanted over the border. Yeah, and also we're wanted by the Empire, so who's going to go pick up that bounty? Yeah, yeah good point. <laughs> yeah, ooh, two people did run away. What, oh, what, yes, I'm here for my reward money. Yeah. What, uh, what were some other alternate takes? Uh, oh, uh, I was going to have, you know, like those Trent's uh, from Lord of the Rings, like the big talking tree things? 
Mm -hmm. I was going to have you run into cactus versions of them with a bunch of dead goblins hanging off them. And if you could have talked to them, because uh, you could talk to plants if you use the patch, that's the thing. I didn't think you'd use it to talk to birds. I gave it to you for that particular <laughs> encounter. Right. And, and the deal would have been is that the uh, the cactus people would have been like, oh, yeah, they keep trying to steal our flowers for this airship and everything, but they live over there. Can you go kick their asses for us? That's Yeah, a, that would be cool uh, with that. Um, also... I guess in retrospect, we were looking for something else that we could have, like, oh, we should have done that from the beginning. Notes. Yeah. Pen paper. I mean, mm. the, the pen paper aspect of D&D &D is never something that's ever going to go away. I mean, granted, we have, like, apps now, like D&D &D Beyond and stuff like that, where you can constantly update your character sheets digitally. But, like, just it, the, our first sessions was like, wait, what? And me kind of casually, like, looking for pen and paper within arm's length. <laughs> While we were playing, but not trying to like make it look conspicuous, and and you know because yeah. it was laid back and because it's just audio yeah. and everything, I I didn't care that much. Like here's the thing, I'm a bad note taker in my own games. I always say like, yeah, that fucking guy. What was his name? Again? Yeah, that guy. Because <laughs> right. it's all fantasy bullshit names, which is another thing I kind of tried to like fight in this thing where I'm like, nah, dude's gonna be named Nolan Liam because the city is Oasis and everything is named right. after it's Oasis. Because everybody just had like normal names. Like you you walk up to Timothy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's up, Tim? Yeah, it's a fantasy land, but they have regular <laughs> names. Also, how long did it take you guys to clue into the fact that everything in Oasis was named after Oasis? Even Starkey is their bass player. Oh, almost immediately. <laughs> oh, I never got that. Yep, everything yeah, I think at one point record. in the game, I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to mention it anymore. Like, I wasn't even going to draw attention to it. Like, we're just going to roll with this. I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, the brothers hate each other. Wonderwall Emporium over oh, here. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. A, okay. Liam, That's Nolan, yeah. Starkey. Starkey. That's literally the only thing I know about Oasis is that <laughs> the brothers hate each other. So now I'm like, oh, okay. And, and, and also had big problems with math. So I think it's only right that one of them is also moving fantasy math. <laughs> <laughs> which is another thing I only put in the game to be like, all right, you know, how, how far is this group willing to go with this? Because I know if I'm sure if I pulled that on my other group, they'd have no part of it. So I'm glad that we could do that. Uh, I, I activate dare plus two. Yeah, really. I, <laughs> I see your fantasy drug, and I raise you skinning a human being. <laughs> Dragon yeah, but, being. But for the guys that played for the first time, for, for Aaron and Josh, like... Is there is the intimidation gone? Like, do you feel like now you you, you could actually probably step into someone else's game at this point? Oh no, not at all. Oh, absolutely, absolutely not. Because I didn't not. I didn't play this thing. I broke this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wheel. I broke listen, the wheel. What I did. Listen, I play fighting games. This is the equivalent of button mashing. What I did in today's. <laughs> yeah, game. absolutely. Yeah, I can't go to Evo with this. No. <laughs> Isn't it fun, though? <laughs> my, my yeah, but friend, I had fun with this, yes. Yeah. My best friend DMs uh, a D&D &D game, and I've never played with them. Uh, and I know that if I take the tools I've learned here yeah. and, and I go to his game, I won't have a best friend anymore. <laughs> I, I imagine there'd be a lot of that's not how Joel runs it. Joel lets me do fantasy drugs and crazy yeah, ideas. He just, he just get, has it up to here with my silliness or whatever, and I just kind of treat this like an improv game for the most part. Which is definitely why I wanted an actual comedian in here, too. I'm like, I bet Josh would be great to play with that. I was right. Yeah, I could just yes and my way through it situation if i'm not 100 percent sure what i'm doing <laughs> and i always said uh to myself at least like if we ever get like stuck in a corner we have a guy here uh in our party that is experienced in it so like if it came down to it i was just gonna trust his like Judge. decision making yeah Especially. yeah basically the best way i can put this is i don't feel like anyone outside of this would put up with the shit that i'd like to <laughs> <laughs> really because i mean i create i mean like i said it earlier i was craving it i was like oh my god this is totally not the same D, D game i've played for the last seven eight years with like different groups of people like i i had fun making freaking good fellas references and shit but i'm like this is fine i'm actually really enjoying this it's exactly the energy i wanted because i didn't yeah. want just like a generic fantasy thing i wanted high <sighs> fantasy and we got that <laughs> we got high <laughs> fantasy on this one i'm like all right here's a genre that no one is servicing right now well if you if you need inexperience you know who to go to mm. <laughs> that's all it makes to make the soup sizzle uh, the fact uh, that the movie Hi your highness happened and like D, D parties did not just run with that fucking idea know, right like that was such a lot we i'm glad thank you let's make this happen <laughs> 
need more fantasy stoner adventures is what we yes need. yes we do all right so so any uh closing thoughts anything else uh you want to mention uh well i'm i know i am looking forward to starting our adventure south of the border mm. uh like when, whenever that happens i'm excited to see where this uh whole story goes and the conclusion and hopefully it doesn't go on for like seven seasons <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, when it's... Now, we'll reboot by then. We'll do the comic book thing. We'll get to 52, and then we'll go back to one, and we'll have a crisis. <laughs> and Our know, last quest is going to be 45 minutes long, and everybody's going to be pissed off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you'll all meet multiversal versions of yourself, then I'll recast you all. <laughs> It'll be the same characters, sure. but different actors. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um, if, if, to be honest, like, uh, now that I'm a little bit more comfortable with everyone, like, because we did this for, like, three or four hours now, like, I'm really excited to bring the edibles to the next adventure. Oh, hmm. yeah. I'm not You're joking. Not... Like, I'm really like, oh, wow, okay, cool. Like, this is the game we're going to play. Like, and now that we're having this conversation, I'm starting to think, like, that would be hilarious. L like yeah, I said, yeah. it would be nice to not be the only stone person here <laughs> while this is going on. <laughs> now this explains why he didn't put the camera on in Skype. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because I don't own a camera. <laughs> and, and, and teetotaling Joel, sober as a judge, but just really likes the aesthetic of it all. Living in Canada. Uh, really into it. Yeah. Uh, again, like I said, uh, I really hope people enjoy this, and I hope that this uh, builds the following that I think it deserves, not to pat myself on the back and jerk myself off too hard there, but I, I think we <laughs> you do. You do, man. Good job on I, this. I, I Absolutely. We, I'm proud of the work we've done here, and I hope the people like it too. Be sure to blow up our inboxes and Twitter and tell us you want Season 2, Volume 2 of this. And I mean, hey, if you're on the tabletop Reddits and the stuff like that that I don't go to and don't know about, share, share this show with your friends. And say that it's something different in the genre because we would love to do this more. And hey, uh, for season two, uh, if people are interested too, hey, maybe we can do the streaming thing. I think that's what uh, D and D shows do. Yes, they stream live and get fans involved and shit. I do believe. I think a chat. Oh god, I would love to see what a live chat looks like with this fucking game. Oh, I know. Right? I really would. Oh, they. I mean, I, I'm personally not excited about it, but that's <laughs> just because uh, people who follow streams have a propensity to lay on the end. Key. Don't, Pretty heavy. <laughs> like, don't, don't worry, I take care of that already. I was sure to yeah. make sure. I, I got oh, good, good. There's a reason I don't play Xbox Live anymore. Uh. Subscriber only chat. Oh, I got off. Like, <laughs> listen, I love fighting games and I love Overwatch. I do not listen to team chat in mm. either of those things Nor ever. should you. You can't do it. Awful. Yeah. Every time, my first thought was just, how did they know? I, like, it's every time. <laughs> I, I, I like to think between us all, we have really good fan bases, which is also why I was sure to select you all that I did to be part of my tabletop Avengers. Because <laughs> I'm like, who are some cool people with cool fan bases who I can hang out with for upwards of two hours? <laughs> oh, oh, also, too, uh, one last uh, piece of behind-the-scenes news before we close this one. There was supposed to be a fourth member of this party, Ashley Victoria Robinson, uh, comic writer, creator, uh, former DC All Access host and everything. Uh, she was oh, she would have been okay with any of this. She has a career. I, she has <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would have thought how she's depicted yeah, real quick. She, yeah, she would have been like Joel. Our crutch here. Yeah, Joel would have been, or yeah, she would have been like, Joel, you can't put any of this up is what you can do. This has to be just for us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I wonder what she would have, because she's a cool lady. I'm sure she would have been up for it, but at the same time too, she'd be like, mm, I can't follow you there. Uh, well, we could you must now go to a Mexico place right away when we go south of the border. Here's here, here's the thing too. She was actually going to be playing a chaos sorcerer, which actually would have made things even more mm. crazy. Because the deal is with a chaos sorcerer, every time they cast a spell, they're supposed to roll another dice, and me as a DM is supposed to look at basically a ledger and pick a crazy effect that happens as a result of that spell. Oh jeez. So they're like, like Deadpool. Why? They just insert randomness everywhere they go. That's oh, fantastic. she would have fit in fine then. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what that would have turned the game Unless into. one of the effects was you get high, I still think she'd have to worry about her career. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit there. But, uh, hey, but we miss you, Ashley. Maybe we can get We're living in a guess. bubble at this point. We forget what <laughs> successful people are like. That's, that's <laughs> true. They have shit they have to think about. 
Uh, yeah, I was going to say, we'll be sure to get you in on the next season, but after you listen to season one, maybe you won't. And I know Jason said, he's like, oh, I love D&D. I'd like to hang out with this one, too. I'm like, would you, though? <laughs> but if you're depraved enough, let us know. Why you always hey. <laughs> like to listen to what you want to go on to before. Exactly. That's why you should listen. And on that note, everyone, we can start bringing this down. Thank you for listening to the post show. Thank you for hanging out. I'm going to assume thank you for being a fan from the very beginning. I don't know if this is going to have fans. We're recording this after the end of the last session, so past Joel has no idea talk to future Joel about that shit Just talk oh, to future Joel talk to future Joel and uh, I guess before we uh, end off to uh, tell everyone where they can find you on the socials and everything because obviously if they're listening to this they know where I am and stuff oh uh, it's the Kirk FM at the Kirk FM at pretty much all my socials I live on Twitter sadly and uh, um, I did just start a Twitch channel and I really do need to actually put some content up on it because it's been like almost like three weeks since I've streamed, but that's up. And I also uh, do comic book reviews for a uh, website called panelpatter.com and we're Eisner nominated. So it's a lot of interviews and uh, uh, comic reviews over there. Wicked. Who wants to go uh, next? <laughs> I'll, I'll go. Uh, yeah, this is bad when one of us doesn't have a webcam on, so we can't like make like the visual like. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'll go. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Professor Thorgy. You can find me on YouTube. Uh, if you want to like listen to me talk about comic books and do movie reviews, you can find me at Professor Thorgy. If you want to hear me talk about video games, uh, go to Thorgy's Arcade. Uh, we have a very large video that's like three hours long that I'm working on for over there right now. So now is the perfect time to subscribe before you find out how terrible it is so <laughs> yes tune in now thank you oh yeah and josh uh well i don't have as much going on as these guys so you could just follow me over at twitter at josh of a sandwich uh and uh if you're interested my album tabitha is available on spotify apple music google whatever uh, just anywhere where uh you could stream albums and i don't see any of the proceeds Aww. but i am um, but I'm cool with it uh, as long as people are listening to it and enjoying it. I, I never really gave a shit about any of that. Uh, so, you know, follow me on uh, Twitter if you en enjoy uh, self-deprecation and cat dad humor. Uh, mm. And listen to the album if you enjoy self-deprecation and cat dad humor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that'll just about do That's it. a really good second album title. Yeah. <laughs> self-deprecation. Yeah. The second album is called Tab with the Two, Tab with the Harder. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, it is TBD. <laughs> oh, hey, okay. you, you can make some hard-hitting D&D jokes now that you've experienced it. Oh, no, I'll get called out by the purists real fast, oh, and I'll crumble yeah. under the pressure. Yeah, who who do you think you are, nerd comedian? <laughs> you're, no, you're no Brian Pose, and you're no Kamel Nanjiani. <laughs> Who, who are you? You're no probably a third this. person. Yeah, we're really. <laughs> You're a third comic. <laughs> and on that note, everyone, we're going to all bid you goodbye. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>